Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa mursaleen Nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma infa'na bima alamtana Wa alimna ma yanfa'una Allahumma zidna ilman Innaka anta al-alimul hakim Allahumma ij'al hadhi al-muhadara Hujjatan lana La hujjatan alayna Ya Rabbil Alameen <coughs> Amma ba'at This is our second class Dealing with A hadith from Umdat al-Ahkam The first class consisted of An introduction An introduction to the book An introduction to the subject An introduction to the author And like this uh, Today inshallah ta'ala We're going to be covering two hadith Generally speaking, I would like to cover more than that. However, for starters, since this is a lot of information, uh, and for some ahadith, we're going to go into great detail and some differing of opinions among Ahlul Ain. And for some of the ahadith, we're going to keep it really basic. Um, today, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to get into some detail for the second hadith. Uh, so, once again, this class will be dealing with the ahadith from fasting. And paying zakat al fitr. Asiyan. What is asiyan? We're going to talk about that in a minute. Yuqal annahu rub' al iman. Some of the salaf, some of the scholars of the past, they say that fasting is a quarter of faith. Rub' al iman. A quarter of faith. Well, why is that? Why do they say that? This is due to. A reported statement of the Prophet والسلام, wherein it was said that he said Fasting is half of patience And having patience is half, is half of having faith Therefore, fasting is a quarter of Iman Does that make sense? Yes like, these are two narrations. The first narration was reported by Imam Tirmidhi in his book, Kitab al-Da'wat. Kitab al-Da'wat. In English, I guess it the, the book of calling or calls, if you will. Uh, the second one, As-Sabru Nisf al-Iman. This hadith was reported uh, by Imam al-Bayhaqi. And likewise, you can find this in his book, Shu'b al-Iman. Shu'b al-Iman. Tayyip. Before we continue, it's always important to know what's the definition of things. What are we talking about? So we're talking about fasting. As you mentioned before, we have a definition that is linguistic and we have a definition that is more technical. We have a definition that is linguistic and we have a definition that is more technical. With regards to the linguistic meaning of song, song, fasting, what does it mean? Does anyone know? Huh? MashaAllah. We're going to fast Ramadan. What, what does fasting mean? Soul. Fast. What does that mean? The fast. Uh, stay away from food, drink. La. Linguistically, what does it mean? To get closer to Allah. To get closer. Well, linguistically, uh, not necessarily. Restraint. Restraint. Ahsent. The meaning of fasting linguistically means to restraint or something called imsak. The word is Arabic is called al-imsak. Al-imsak, it means to refrain, right? But refrain from what? Just refrain, period. And the proof to support this meaning, the statement of Allah Jalla wa Ala, and he says in his book, فَقُولِي إِنِّي نَذَرْتُ لِلْرَحْمَانِ سَوْمًا as it mentions in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Samariyah, it says, say that I took another, I made another, or swearing to Allah or oath, Rahmani soma. I took another, Rahman to Allah soma. Soma here means imsak. In other words, he won't speak to anyone. He won't speak to anyone. So here, linguistically, we find that the word soma, it also means not to speak, to be quiet, imsak, to hold back. And another example, 
Samat al rih Samat al rih What does that mean? Holding back al rih is the wind. To hold back the wind. What does that mean? Ida amsakat an al hubub. It's when the when the, the the temperature or the 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 weather, if you will, the, the wind is stopped blowing. So it says that samat al rih. In other words, the wind stopped blowing. So here, samat means it refrained from blowing. Refrain from the wind moving. Does that make sense? Or no? Fine. Right now, if you stand outside, okay, the wind's blowing. All of a sudden, the wind stopped blowing. When the wind stopped blowing, samat al rih. In other words, the wind stopped blowing. Refrained from blowing. Okay? Is that clear? Thank you. Right now, this is just a technical or a linguistic meaning for the word song. Okay? Qala Abu Ubaidah. Abu Ubaidah is from one of the ulama in the past. He said, Kullu mumsikin an ta'amin aw kalamin aw sirin fahuwa sa'im. He said that any type of fasting here is any type of reframing from food, speech, travel, this is considered fasting or sa'im, a person that is fasting. We're still on the linguistic meaning. Okay? طيب. Shara'an. And pay attention to the definition. <clears throat> the, the technical term for the word fasting is very specific. So the ulama al-Islam, and they say that usually, specifically the ulama of al-usul, they say that they like to have definitions that are jami'un, Mani'un. What does that mean? A definition that is jami'un, mani'un, it means that the definition, it comprises everything that it needs to contain in it, and it excludes everything that should not be included in it. It's very specific. And when you hear this definition, you're going to say, wow, this is pretty deep. So it starts off, shar'an, the definition of fasting shar'an, or fasting technically. It means imsakun an asha. In other words, it says to refrain from certain specific things. What else? During a specific time. What else? And it's from a specific type of person. What else? With an intention that is very specific. What does that mean? Okay, and how is it inclusive and exclusive at the same time? When we look at the first part of the definition, Imsak an asha makhsusatan. This means to refrain from certain things specifically. Like what? Smoking. Maybe. Right now we're going to find out. So it could be smoking. Eating. It could be eating. Bad it could be, well, it could be have being intimate with the spouse. It could be a lot of different things. So here it says to refrain from specific things, to refrain from things um, that are specific. Right? In a specific time. What time period are we talking about? Ramadan. Ramadan, right? Or another specific time could be or a time when, uh, when a person swears, okay? Or he makes an oath. If a person makes an oath, something like that, then fasting can become obligatory for that person. Another thing, from a specific person. What type of person? A Muslim, ahsant. So that person must be a Muslim, right? Biniyatan maqsusa, with a very specific intention. Trying to turn this light on? Gotta pull the switch right here. We can just pull that switch right there. <coughs> yeah, I think it's the long one. Thank you. Thank you. So it says, Min shaksin maqsusin, from a Muslim. Biniyatan maqsusa. With a very specific intention. Notice when we fast for Ramadan, we have to have the intention to fast the night before. Right? So then, in general, the definition shara'an, or technically, for fasting in Ramadan is imsak an asha maqsusatan. To stay away from very specific things, during uh, very specific things like food and other things. Right? Fi zeminin maqsus, in a very specific time. Like Ramadan. 
There are other times, but we're focusing on Ramadan. Men shaksin maksusin, from a specific type of person. Who is that person? He is a what? A Muslim. He or she is a Muslim. Biniyatin maksusatin, with a very specific intention. The intention as a Muslim, you, you make your intentions to fast tomorrow for Ramadan or the day after, so on and so forth. Are we clear on that? Bye. Ramadan, furida fi sinnata thaniyata min al hijri. So, fasting Ramadan became wajib in the second year of the Islamic time period after the hijrah. The second year after the hijrah is when fasting became obligatory ijma'an. When we say ijma'an, we're talking about a consensus among the scholars of Al-Islam. And generally speaking, we're talking about the earlier generations from the companions. From those who came after them with regards to ijma'an, then there are some differing of opinion from the Ahlul Ilm. طيب. فصام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسعة رمضانات إجماع. And likewise, it was reported that the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he fasted nine Ramadans before he passed away صلى الله عليه وسلم. طيب. If anyone wanted to look that up, you can find some information with regards to that in the book called Al Udda في شرح Al Udda لابن الطار. And likewise, with regards to the definition that we gave for uh, technical meaning for siyam or fasting, we can look in a book called Al Muttalaq ala Abwaab Al Muqni' li Ibn Abil Fat. Li Ibn Abil Fat. Now we're going to proceed to the first hadith. The first hadith, An Abi Hurayrata radiallahu ta'ala anhu qaa. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تقدم رمضان بصوم بصوم يوم ولا يومين إلا رجلا كان يصوم صوما فليصومه. There's a book that someone showed me last week. Uh, it's an explanation or summarized explanation. Uh, from these specific chapters that we're going to be covering from Sheikh Ruthameen Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Um, I saw it yesterday assist, or last week, uh, two weeks ago, a sister showed me the book. If anyone is able to grab that book and bring it with them, it will be beneficial as it's dealing with fasting and uh, certain aspects of zakat. Fasting and certain aspects of zakat. Al Muham, huh? What's the name of the book? It's Umda Tahkam. But I, you can go ask for that. I, I've seen it, but you know. Uh, so this hadith here, the first hadith, was reported on Abi Huraira ta radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Do not la taqaddamu Ramadan bi sawmi yawmin. Do not fast early. Before Ramadan with one day or two days in advance before Ramadan. Except, except for a person that does this type of fasting normally. If this is his case, فَلْيَسُمْهُ If this is something that this person normally does, then he should fast. Or he can fast فَلْيَسُمْهُ What are some benefits we can take from this hadith? What are some benefits, huh? Anyone? Fadda. And this is what, when we study this in the university, some of the mashayik, they would, they would say, look, give us some of the benefits that you can pull from this hadith before we get into some of the more detailed uh, benefits that we can pull from it. Fadda. The virtues of fasting throughout the year. The virtues of fa ahsant. Nice. Huh? The virtues. Okay, show us where you got that from that hadith. Huh? That's the benefit. He, he pulled from this hadith, mashallah. He said, one of the benefits that we get from this hadith is the virtue of fasting uh, throughout the year. So a person like me, how do you get that from this hadith? The end of the hadith where it says, except those who are already fasting. Ahsant. He said, the end of the hadith with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, except for the one who normally fasts. Excellent. Anyone else? Huh? You had your hand raised, right? I know, I was going to say that. Are you going to say the same thing? Yeah. Tayyib. Huh? Hats. No one? Want to read the hadith again? Sure. Tayyib. 
So the hadith was reported. The Prophet والسلام, he said, لا تقدموا رمضان Do not proceed fasting Ramadan. بصوم يوم With one or two days, do not fast before the entrance of Ramadan. One or two days unless it is a fast that you normally would do. Unless it is a fast that you would normally do. If this is the case, فَلْيَسُمْهُ If this is the case, then you can fast it. Huh? Give me something. The ulama in al-Islam, they look at these ahadith and they extract tons of information. I know we're not scholars here, but we can try to pull something. Huh? You already got it. Go ahead. I want to answer everything. All right. Um, I just one more. It's the impermissibility of fasting before Ramadan. Ahsan. Ah, Easy. Is it impermissible? Haram? What's the hukum? What's the ruling? Is it haram? Or is it hated? Is it... What? Uh, we, we in class, man. You can make mistakes. What you think? Probably makruh. Probably makruh. With who? Understand something, too. We're studying this primarily on the method of Imam Ahmed. Just so you know. So you're going to hear some stuff. Where we get that from? We're just studying a particular way. It doesn't mean that everything, every uh, in conclusion we come with is going to be the strongest position, if you will. But some of them may be, you know, interesting. It's interesting to note and to understand some of the differences that Ahlul Ilm, that they have on, on some of these ahadith and understandings. <clears throat> so the first thing that we can pull from this hadith, like the brother said, Al-Nahi an taqaddum Ramadan bi yawm o yawmain. The first thing that we can pull from this is the impermissibility of fasting one or two days before Ramadan. Like, what about three days before Ramadan? Huh? If you're used to doing that, it said if you prior to Ramadan, if you was doing it then, it's, the, it's permissible to do it. For the three days or the one or two? For whatever many days you allow, you was doing it prior to. Okay. Anyone else? You agree with that statement? You agree with that? No. You don't agree? But right, what do you have? One or two. One or two. Okay, what about fasting three days before? It shouldn't be permissible because it's nobody said. Huh? It shouldn't be permissible. Okay, he says it shouldn't be permissible. But what you said earlier, when you just said that... I was, said it should be permissible because it wasn't mentioned. I sent. He says it should be permissible because it wasn't mentioned. And that it is. It's permissible because it wasn't mentioned. And so, it says, As with Amma Thalathat Ayyam Falabats. If it's three days before, then it's no problem. If it's three days before, then it's no problem. But... Next benefit we can take وَخَرَجَ الطَّبْرَانِ عَنْ عَيْشَةَ تَرَادِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهَا Wherein she said, this is reported by Aisha تَرَادِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ عَنْهَا And you can also find this, I think, in Tafsir uh, Tafsir Imam al-Baghli And it says here, and this is Surah Al-Hujurat Where she said أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا يَتَقَدَّمُونَ الشَّهَرَ فَالْيَسُومُونَ قَبْلَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ Aisha, it was reported that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that she said that people would try people would precede the Prophet والسلام, in fasting. They would precede him in fasting. And so she said that this verse was revealed. Where Allah says, Fa'anzalallahu, or she said that Fa'anzalallahu ta'ala, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu la tu kaddimu bayna yadayillahi wa rasulih. And the verse was revealed, O oh, you who believe, do not taqaddam, do not put yourself in front of Allah and His Messenger. And some of them use this for this particular narration, even with regards to fasting. With regards to fasting, as was reported by al tabarani and likewise you can find this, this report in uh, Tafsir al-Baghwi. Tafsir al-Baghwi. Naam, tafadda. Well, we're going to stay on the subject. You got questions wait to the end. Okay. All right, we got some information to cover, Sheikh. Tayyip. Uh, the next one. Al Fasul Baina Siyam Al Fart Wan Nafal. Another benefit that some of the ulama extracted from this hadith is the separation between fasting that is obligatory and fasting that is voluntary. And so some, they say the reason why the prohibition is there. Is because if you fast one day before Ramadan 
and the next day is Ramadan, there's no separation between the fast that is wajib and the fast that may be sunnah. طيب. فإن جنس الفصل بين الفرائض والنوافل المشروع. And they said this is because a separation between certain acts of worship that are considered to be obligatory and or considered to be uh, voluntary, there needs to be some type of break in between them. This is legislated from the religion. Likewise, the Prophet Ali Salatu was Salam, he was Naha or Nahi, and you Salat Salat al Mafroda, be Salat Hatta Yafsila Bainahuma. And if you notice, if any of you have read, I'm sure many of you have read this, when you finish praying a wajib prayer, then you should separate the space between that and the Sunnah. It said this right here, it says specifically the Sunnah for Salat al Fajr. Okay, in terms of separating the time, making some type of distinction between the times for the prayers. Is that clear? No. No, it's not clear. No. But right now, we're going to pray. Right now, you come into the masjid and you pray Fajr. No, you pray the Sunnah of Fajr, two rakah for Fajr, and then you get up and pray two more rakah. Someone looking at it, they wouldn't know, they would think that perhaps they're the same prayer. Right? So what we're advised to do is make a distinction. So if, say, for example, you pray two rakah, you get up, you move to a different location, you pray again. So that is not, so you're separating. In other words, if you're doing an act of worship that is voluntary, and then right after that, you do an act of worship that is obligatory, there needs to be some form of distinction between the two. So when I make the two rakah for in honor of the mass let us move over and then make the Fudger prayer. Fudger. Okay. Like that. Yeah. yeah. You, in other words, you just have to make a distinction. <laughs> okay? But usually when you come into the masjid, you're going to be praying in Jama'ah. You're going to be praying in congregation anyway for Fudger. Yes. Qal al Hafid ibn Rajib. Al Hafid ibn Rajib, Rahimullah Ta'ala. He says, Siyam akhru Sha'ban lahu ahwa. He said, fasting towards the end of the month of Sha'ban, there are conditions. Before we talk about this, we have the month of Sha'ban. What's after Sha'ban? Does anyone know? Huh? Rajab? Yeah, Sheikh. What fast, what month is after Sha'ban? Ramadan. Ramadan. What's after Ramadan? Dhul Hijjah. Dhul Ka'da. Muharram. Yeah, Sheikh. Yeah, this is very important. Huh? We have this is important because in order to follow, we need to understand Dhul Hijjah. Yeah, Sheikh. After Ramadan is Dhul Hijjah? Huh? What is what is before Ramadan? What is before Ramadan? Sha'ban. The month Ahsant. Okay, so then we have we're gonna go over that later. Right now, the important thing is these three months, right now. We have Sha'ban, which is the month right before Ramadan. Then we have, it's not, we can't just say June. It doesn't match up that way. Because every year is going to fluctuate. Right. We'll talk about that later, inshallah. Okay? Um, so the first month, we're going to be talking about Sha'ban. Then after Sha'ban, we have Ramadan. Then after Ramadan, we have Shawab. Tyree. Just think about these three. Okay? al Hafiz ibn Rajib. Rahimahullah Ta'ala He said that with regards to the month Fasting towards the end of Sha'ban There are conditions here Certain things to look at Tayyip He says when a person fasts During the end of Sha'ban And yasum bi niyyata ramadhaniya Ihtiyatan li ramadhan Fahada manhiyun an If a person fasts Towards the end of Sha'ban In other words One or two days before Ramadan with the intention for it being Ramadan, even though it's not Ramadan, this is prohibited. This is what? Prohibited. prohibited. The second one. And you saw him beneath another al qada and Ramadan al kafaratan wa nahwa dalika fajawazahu al jamhur. If a person fasts the same time, one or two days before Ramadan, however, this person fasts those days because he made another. What's another? Say, for example, 
If a person is sick and he says, if Allah cures me, I'm going to, well, he swears by Allah, if Allah cures me, I'm going to fast three days in a row. Allah cured him from his sickness. Now it's wise if that he fasts those three days in a row. It just so happens that it's right before Ramadan. Okay? That's one case. The next case, <clears throat> a person has some days that he did not fast from Ramadan last year. It's only two days left in the month of Sha'ban. Now he has to fast those days before Ramadan comes in. Right? In the last case, if a person he make he he swears, like say for example, well, Allah, I'll never talk to this person again, and then he spoke to him again. Ah, now he has to pay a kafara. Okay, a kafara. We spoke about this before, an expiation or a penalty, if you will. Uh, I think the first one is freeing a slave. He can't free a slave. The next one is feeding 60 people or six people. Feeding six people. He can't do that. Next thing he has to do is what? Fast. He has to fast three days. Three days. This fast here is watching. So now we mentioned three very specific situations in which a person has to fast. And this is according to uh, it's permissible for these people to fast during this time. And this is according to Jamhur al ulama What is Jamhur anyway? What does that mean? You guys ever heard that before? Jamhur? You heard that before? Jamhur or the strongest position. And what does that mean? Huh? What's the strongest position? What does that mean? Consensus. Consensus? No. Strongest position is the strongest position of the sky. Ahsant. Ahsant. So then. What is Jamhur? What is the majority position? What is that? We got the majority position. We got the strongest position. Huh? Help us out. The majority position? Then what does that mean? Meaning that the majority of the scholars take this position. Good. Does that mean it's the, always the correct position? No. no. So who determines whether it's correct or incorrect? The, the, the person that the individual. Which individual? So you mean the one who follows the scholars determines whether the position is correct or not? Yes, shit. What's the first term you used before? Jamhur. Jamhur means the majority. Okay? Who determines whether the majority position is correct or incorrect? Is it, is it continued, is it continued? You said what? You said the proofs? Uh, who looks at the proofs and makes that determination? Huh? One who's ground at fifth. One who's ground? Alam, scholar. Tight. So when you when you say when you say that the cola of Jamhur and the majority position is this, but I, not meaning me, but someone that's a scholar that's qualified, say that what the more correct position is this, then that is the strongest position to that particular scholar, even if it goes against the Jamhur or the majority. As long as he has his adilla and his wujuist law, he has his evidence and how he extracted his ruling for that particular issue, then that is with him. As long as it's not something that's ba'id, something that's far out, something that goes against ijma. Tayyip? And ijma is scholarly consensus. Tayyip. So then, the third thing that Ibn Rajib Ta'ala mentions, he says, and you saw him If a person he fasts with the intention of making a sunnah fast. He says, Fakariahu. He said, this is hated for a person to fast like this because you need to make a distinction between the fast that is obligatory and the fast that is sunnah. However, with regards to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, it says, المعتمد, and the mu'tamid for the madhab, the one that the fiqh of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that, or the Madhab says that Adam al Karaha and to cut them Ramadan bisiyam talatayam fasaidan. That it is not hated. Pay attention. It is not hated, and this is according to the Madhab of Imam Ahmed. It is not hated to precede fasting before Ramadan with three days or more. Does that make sense? We said that earlier. If it's three days, lebats. It's not hated. If it's three days or more, you're fasting before that, lebats. It's no problem. Likewise, wa and wafaqa adatan. And likewise, if this person that fasts 
that if it's from his ada, in other words, if it's something that he usually does, say he fasts Mondays and Thursdays every month, nonstop, then for this person is likewise no problem if it was before Ramadan. Right. وَلَوْ كَانَ تَقَدَّمْ بِصَوْمْ يَوْمَ وَيَوْمَيْنِ لِمَنْطُقْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ وَمَفْهُومَ Even if this person, he fasts Mondays and Thursdays and it happens to be the, the following day is Ramadan, even if it is this person, if this is his normal practice, then it's okay for him to do it. And this is based off of that which the hadith specifically states and the understanding of the hadith. And this is the position of the madhab of Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala. However, there are going to be some scholars that differ with that. Oh, brother, well, I, I read Sheikh such and such. I said, all right, that's cool. Labats. No problem. Labats. We didn't say this was, we didn't say this issue here is mujma alay. We didn't say that this is a scholarly consensus on this issue. And whoever opposes it has won a strike. No. No. Fima job. There's some space there. So that is the end of the first hadith that we covered. And who can remember what that hadith was and who reported it? Who, record, who reported the hadith and what was it again? So you're taking notes. We didn't take the hadith. Abu Huraira Ahsant. What was the hadith? Hey, what? That's it? No, I mean, I'm, I summarize it. Except if that was something. that was something that they, they normally do. So if there's something that they normally do, then, fell your sumhu. And the Prophet, he said, fell your sumhu. And he gave an amr, a command here, that is okay for them to fast. <clears throat> but the next hadith, um, there's some great detail with it. And so you guys have to follow along carefully. Before we start this hadith, there's something that we need to be aware of. And that is, in Ramadan, or when we look to find the moon for Ramadan, if you will, <clears throat> in Islam, the night precedes the day. Does that make sense? Yes. What does that mean? The day starts and ends at Maghrib. The day starts, the day starts, starts and or the night starts. Yeah, well, the night starts. So the night starts at Maghrib. Maghrib. So that means that's why we fast. I mean, we pray, uh, um, Tarawir prayer that night, and then we start fasting the following day. All right, so what we're saying is. Uh, fasting starts, I'm sorry, the night precedes the day, right? right. So, what's today's date? 16th. The 16th. So at Maghrib tonight, Islamically, we were going to the 17th, right? All right. <clears throat> it's important to understand that, because, does that make sense? I'm listening. No, no make, okay, so, in Islam, the once the sun goes down that marks the beginning of a new day but the night comes before the day okay so <clears throat> when we get so this hadith here is very important to understand that because it has a lot to do with that all right so the hadith was reported on abdullah ibn umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu qaw he said سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إذا رأيتموه فصوموا وإذا رأيتموه فأفطروا فإن غم عليكم فقدروا أو فقدروا له. طيب. <coughs> this hadith it translates to me. This was reported by Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه, where he said. When you see the crescent moon, start fasting. And when you see the crescent moon again, stop fasting. And if the sky has an overcast and it's cloudy and you can't see it, then regard the month as, depending on how we define it, 
the the uh, regard the <clears throat> then regard the month as shorter or longer depending on the meaning of the word faqdiru lahu or faqduru lahu does that make sense so far yes or not If it didn't make sense, just stop. It's okay. That makes sense. Excellent. What part didn't make sense? None of it? So if you can't see the problem, the moon at the end. So, okay, so good. If you can't, yeah, good. So if you can't see the moon at the end, then the hadith says, fuck duru lahu. What that means is either shorten it or make it longer. There are narrations that say make it longer and so on and so forth. And this is what we're going to be discussing about this hadith today. All right? So we're good up until that point, right? First thing, <clears throat> the early man al Islam, they say that Yajibu Sum Ramadan bi Rukyatil Hila. First thing we understand from this hadith is that it is obligatory to fast once a person sees the Hila or the moon, the crescent moon, the spark, the beginning of the month of Ramadan. What does that mean? When do you go look for the crescent moon anyway? So right now, if we're in Sha'ban, we just finished the 29th day. In Islam, a month is either going to be 30 days or 29 days. So we just finished the 29th day. At Maghrib, we're going to be going into the night of the 30th. Either A, the 30th is going to be the Eid, or B, the 30th, we're going to fast. I'm sorry. If we're in Sha'ban, Either A, the 30th is going to be the first day of Ramadan, or the 30th, we're going to continue eating and wait for the end of that month. Does that make sense? Yes. Again? Yes. Say it again? Yes. All right. Right now is the, t- <laughs> Love us. Right now is the 29th of Sha'ban. So we're like, we, today is the 29th, and it's almost the 30th once it becomes Maghrib. So what happens is there's a group of people. They get together and they say, we're going to go out and look and see if we see the moon. If we see the moon after Maghrib, we see the crescent. That means the next day, that means Shaban was only 29 days. And at that point in time, sparks Ramadan. If we don't see it, then that means the next day is Shaban. And we're going to be fasting for Ramadan the day after. Is that clear? Yes. Is that clear? Yes or no? Huh? You say we, as you say we meaning you the Muslims, right. the people that are res- right. the, the people that are tasked to go look <laughs> to spark oh, the moon. Okay. I thought you were talking about us, the people that are tasked. Whoever is tasked to do people? it, yes, whoever can see it, whoever has the ability to see it. Okay. Yes. Thank. <clears throat> so now, now that we got that part clear, the next part is فَإِنْ لَمْ يُرَى مَا سَحْوَى if you look out there and the sky is clear and you don't see the moon crescent at the end of Sha'ban to mark the beginning of Ramadan, then we what? أَكْمَلُوا عِدَّةُ Sha'ban ثَلَثِينَ يَوْمًا Then that means we will complete the month of Sha'ban to 30 days. Is that clear? طيب ثُمَّ صَامُوا And then we're going to fast after that. فَإِنْ حَالَ دُونَ مُنْذَرِهِ غَيْمٌ أَوْ قَدْرٌ لَيْلَةُ ثَلَثِينَ This is where it gets tricky. This is where it gets sticky. If you go out there and look for it, you know what? It's cloudy. Something clouds the way so we can't see whether the crescent moon is there or not. This is where it gets sticky. Uh, so then, with this, there are three positions in the method of Imam Ahmed. And there is one position that is the relied upon a position in the madhab, even though it's not the majority position of the scholars of Al-Islam. But we're going to discuss it because it has some adilla to it, just like the other positions likewise have adilla to it. So according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, wajib as then it is wajib that you fast the next day for Ramadan. Does that make sense? If you can't see it. If you can't see it. That you yes, according to the method of Imam Ahmed, if you go outside and you see that it's cloudy and you can't see, it's cloudy. The method says wajib as siyam is wajib the fast the next day for Ramadan. So, so on the 29th, 
When you go out on the 29th. The 29th. Okay. When you go out to look, it'll actually be the night of the 30th. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, no. no, not the morning. You go look. But once 30th, once Margaret comes in, that's the time. That's when you're looking. So slightly before or after that time. Are we are we clear on that? Or no? That's why I asked you before. Listen, before we get into this, make sure we're clear on this part before we get. I don't want nobody slipping. Not the 29th day. So the, no, actually, the 30th night. The 30th night, you're going to go out looking. Yeah. It's going to be the end of the 29th night going into the 30th night. You're going to be looking. Either that 30th day is going to be Ramadan or it's not. Is that clear? No? Fight. Is that clear? It's clear? So you're going to go out and look on the 28th, right? You want to look on the 29th? Yes. At, at the Maghrib. After Maghrib on the night of the 29th or after Maghrib on the night of the 30th? After Maghrib, after the 29th. At the Maghrib, 29th. Nah. Yeah. Nah. It's going to be on the 30th. The 29th is the day. Right? Pay attention. This is why it's important to understand this. It's to One second. Let me finish. The 29th is the day. Once it gets closer to Maghrib and Maghrib comes in, then that becomes the night of the 30th. Oh, okay. That's what I'm trying to explain. The night comes first. So when the night comes in, that's when they're going to be looking. Either either the morning is going to be Ramadan, fasting the morning, or you're going to continue eating. Are we clear? All right. So then, now we got to the point, you go out there and you look now. So we have the people, they're looking. They say, man, it's cloudy. We can't see. According to the fiqh of Imam Ahmed, huh? pay attention, then it is wajib that you fast this particular, the next morning. The, the morning of the 30th now becomes the first of Ramadan. You must fast that day. Wajib of Siyam. And this is the position of the madhab. Waqala, uh, also, Sheikh Abdullah Bassam, rahimahullah ta'ala, he has an explanation of these ahadith called Taysir al-A'lam. He says that this is from the Mufradat of Imam Ahmed. What are Mufradat? The word Mufradat means this is where one of the positions where Imam Ahmed won against the Imbata Arba. In other words, he won against the other Imams on this particular issue and he stood alone for the most part on this particular issue. <coughs> well, in, well, and then he has another position, another position on this issue. So we have, he has three. That is Wazib that you fasted. The second one is that وَعَنْهُ لَا يَجِبْ That it is not wajib for you to fast it. And the third position, I want you to have all three positions. And the third position is that تَبِعُ imam. The third position is that you follow the imam. Whatever the imam does, that's what you do. فَإِنْ صَامَ صَامُوا And if he fasts, then you fast. And we're not talking about the imams of the masters here. <laughs> we're talking about the imams, the leaders of the countries, so on and so forth. We're not talking about the imams of the masters. Let's make that clear. طيب. صوم شهر رمضان يجب بأحد بأحد ثلاثة أشياء. So now fasting the month of Ramadan becomes obligatory with one of three one of three issues. The first one رؤية الهلال رمضان يجب صوم إجماع. So if you go out there on the night of the thirtieth, looking and you see it, then it is wajib to fast. Is that clear? This is إجماع, scholarly consensus. That should be easy, right? That's the easy one, right? Or is it tricky? No, easy. easy. Right. The second one. Oh, and this is due to the statement of the Prophet والسلام, where he says, li wa li And this hadith was reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. The second way in which we would know to fast is Kamal Sha'ban Salatina Umid. If we were to sit through the month of Sha'ban for 30 days. Once we completed an entire 30 days of Sha'ban, then we automatically know the next day is Ramadan. That's also very easy. 
And there is no known differing of, uh, of opinion on this issue with regards to uh, Ibn Qudam. Ibn Qudam mentioned that he's not familiar with any differing of, of, of opinion on this particular issue. The third issue, and Yahula Duna Mandarihi Layla to Thalafin Min Shaaban Raymon on Katarun for Yajibu Siamahu Fidahir al Matha. And on this issue here, if you go out on the 30th night looking and it's cloudy, at this point in time, according to the Methab of Imam Ahmed, it is obligatory to fast on this particular day. Who holds this position besides Imam Ahmed? Because there are other narrations that say uh, if if, if Sha'ban is like this, then you make it 30 days. Right? There are other narrations that goes against this. Where did Imam Ahmed get this from and who holds this position? Imam al Khiraqi, he's from the earlier scholars of Al Islam who actually helped or put together the method of Imam Ahmed. And most of the ulama that follow the school of thought of Imam Ahmed, they hold this position. Most of the ulama that follow the school of Imam Ahmed, they hold this position. Once again, most of the ulama that follow the school of thought, the legal school of thought of Imam Ahmed, they hold this position. So the question now was, where did they get this from? Madhab Umar. This is the position of Umar ibn Khattab. Wa ibnahu, and likewise his son, Abdullah ibn Umar. And likewise the companion, Amr ibn As. And likewise Abu Huraira. And likewise Anas. And likewise Muawiyah. And likewise Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And likewise Asma ibn Tay Abi Bakr. Wa qala bihi, and likewise, wa bihi qal, some of the imams of Kibar. During that time, like Bakr ibn Abdul Aziz or Bakr ibn Abdullah al Muzani, and likewise Abu Uthman al Nahdi, wa Maymun ibn Mihran, wa Tawus, wa Mujahid. These are the people who hold this position. Still a minority position, but it's a position that should be respected because the, some major people held this position. And likewise, one Ahmed rewired to Thaniyah. Likewise, reported on Imam Ahmed that there's another position on this issue wherein he said, La yajibu somuhu, that it is not wajib that you fast that day when, the, when it's cloudy and you can't see. He says, La yujzihu on the Ramadan in somuhu. And if a person were to fast that day, then this will not suffice him from a day within Ramadan. Is that clear? In other words, he has two positions. Now we're on his second position. Okay, the second position was if a person fast that day, you can't see. He said, even if you fast that day, that day that you fast will not take away from a day that you're supposed to fast in Ramadan. Is that clear? That's the second position that he holds on this issue. Well, who else held this position? Well, who will call Abi Hanifa? This is the position of Abu Hanifa, wa Imam Malik, wa Imam al Shafi'i, wa Kathirun min Ahl al Ilm. And many, many of the scholars of the Islam. Rather, this is considered the majority position uh, of the scholars of Al-Islam. But now we're going to get into some of the reasons. How could they differ on this when we have clear narrations one way or the other? Right? So now we're going to understand some of the fiqh of Ahlul Ilm. Some of the reasons why they make these different distinctions and where they come from and so on and so forth. As was reported by Abu Huraira to radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where he said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi fa in ghumma alaykum fa akmilu lahu fa akmilu iddata sha'ban thalathin. Ru'a al-Bukhari. In this narration, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, fast when you see it, the, the, the crescent moon, and break your fast when you see the crescent moon. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ And if it becomes cloudy or hazy wherein you can't see, then you should complete the month of Sha'ban with 30 days. It's a hadith. Reported by Imam Bukhari. Then we have another narration. عَنْ إِبْنِ عُمَرْ And then Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqab That the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam He said سُمُّ لِرُؤْيَتِهِ Fast when you see the crescent moon. 
And break your fast when you see the crescent moon. This is Ibn Umar. Ibn Umar said the same thing. And then at the end he says, He said that if it's cloudy outside and you can't see, then you should also complete 30 days. Well, wait a minute. We just said Ibn Umar holds the position that if it's cloudy outside, then you fast. But then here in this narration he says you make it 30 days. What does that mean? وَقَدْ صَحَحْ And then so some of the scholars of Al-Islam, for this reason, they differ on this issue. Okay? وَقَدْ صَحَحْ أَنَّ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ نَهَا عَنْ صَوْمْ يَوْمِ الشَّكْ And there's also a prohibition of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam where he said, you cannot, it is not permissible to fast the day of doubt. You cannot fast a day of doubt. And this is because they say that the origin is that the month of Sha'ban is still in. So you can't, because you're, you have some doubt, you can't move from the month of Sha'ban and start Ramadan based on doubt. Make sense? Right. So then, the question now is, we need to explain the position of Ibn Omar. Why did Ibn Omar take that position? Makes sense, right? Why did Ibn Umar, why did Abdullah Ibn Umar, what was, why did he do it? This is where some of the scholars of Al-Islam, they differ. So they mention, مَا رَوَى النَّافِعِ النَّافِعِ عَنْ Ibn Umar And this is one of the strongest chains in, uh, in hadith, Nafi' عَنْ Ibn Umar. So Nafi' he reported on Ibn Umar, قال, he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, "Innama shahru tis'un wa ashruna." He said, "Indeed, a month is twenty-nine days." فَلَا تَصُومُ حَتَّى تَرَوَى الْهِلَالَ Do not fast unless you see the hilal or the crescent moon. وَلَا تُفْتِرُ حَتَّى تَرَوْهُ And do not break your fast until you see it. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ And if it becomes cloudy, فَقْدِرُ لَهُ فَقْدِرُ لَهُ فَقْدِرُ لَهُ In other words, fulfill, complete. The time. The issue now is what does the word fakdiru or fakduru, what does it mean? In one narration it means 30 days, and in another narration it means to cut it short. Inshallah ta'ala, the brother's gonna call the Adhan, and we will finish this after the Adhan. Inshallah ta'ala. So we'll continue this quick point here and then the rest will finish after the salat, inshallah ta'ala. So we stopped at the point where Ibn Omar made the narration or he reported the narration that if it's, if it's cloudy, فَقْدِرُوا لَهُ then, then complete it. The issue now is what does complete it mean? Does it mean cut it short, cut the month short or extend it to 30 days? There's also reports that say extended to 30 days. Uh, and so based on this, you find some of the uh, the imma, some of the scholars of the past, they explained this by saying that call in Nafir, and he brought the narration of Nafir, wherein he said, Can Abdullah ibn Umar Ida Mada min Sha'ban tis'a tis'atu wa ishruna yawman yab'athu man yandura lahu wa yandura lahu al hila fa in ra'a fa that with regards to Abdullah ibn Umar, Nafir, he said that Abdullah ibn Umar, if we, if we pass 29 days of Sha'ban, and now we're going into the night, huh? we're going into the night of the 30th of Sha'ban. Remember that, right? Right. Then he said he will look for someone to look for the crescent moon for him. But in ra'a for that, if they see the crescent moon, then we wake up in the morning fasting. What in lem yara? However, if they don't see the crescent moon, and if there's no cloudy, if it's not cloudy or anything like that, then they wake up regular. In other words, they wake up muftiran, eating their food, not fasting. 
He says, What in Hala doing? This is this is Nafir reporting on Ibn Omar. He said, However, in Hala Duna Mandarihi Sahabun, if a cloud came above them where they can't see, then he said that he will asbaha sa'iman. Then he will wake up that morning fasting. So now the issue now is what does this word fakdiru or uqdiru? What does this mean? Ma'na iqdiru lahu or fakdiru lahu is permit for those who know Arabic. You can either, as the ulama mentioned with this word, you can either make it a kasra or a bamma. Fakduru lahu or fakdiru lahu. For those that know Arabic, the ulama and al Islam with regards to this word, they say you can make it either a bamma or a kasra. Right. In any event, fakduru lahu. They say that it means bayyaku. In other words, make it short. And the proof that they use to say make it short is a statement of Allah Jalla wa ala, where He says, Man qudira alayhi rizquhu. In other words, if a person's risk becomes tightened, a dayyaku alay or duyika alay. In other words, if a person's risk or sustenance becomes tight. What tadayik lahu and yajal shaban tisata wa ishruna yawman. So making it short here would mean to make the month of Sha'ban twenty-nine days. Wa kat fasarahu ibn Umar bi fi'lihi. And Ibn Umar he explained this with his actions. And he is the one who narrated the hadith. And as the ulama mentioned, the one who narrated the hadith should be a'lamu bi ma'nahu. The one who narrated the hadith should be more knowledgeable of its of its meaning. In fact, qala aliyun, qala aliyun ibn Abi Talib wa Abu Hurayrah wa Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anhum. They said, la an asuma yawman min Sha'ban ahabbu ilayya min an uftira yawman min Ramadan. They said, for me, for us to fast one day in Ramadan, believing that it's one day in Sha'ban, believing that it's from Ramadan, is more beloved for us to, 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 to not fast one day in this Ramadan. Does that make sense? It's more beloved to them that they will fast this additional day uh, as opposed to breaking their fast in a day in Ramadan. Warawihi ibn Umar faqdiru lahu thalathun. Or thalathin, fakdiru lahu thalathin. So Ibn Umar, he also reported the narration where he said, fakdiru, in other words, fulfill it for 30 days. So some of the ulama of uh, Hanabila, the scholars of the school of thought of Imam Ahmed, they said, uh, with regards to this meaning, makhalifatun riwayatul sahiyah mutafiqun alayh. They say that this narration right here goes against another narration that he did that is an authentic in both Bukhari and Muslim. Likewise, when he madhab Ibn Umar, likewise it goes against the madhab of Ibn Umar. So for him to narrate that and then go against that in his action, it goes against that. And he says, with regards to riwayat al nahi and Son Yom al-Shak, when they say it is impermissible to fast the day of shak or the day of doubt, they have a very interesting explanation of what the day of doubt is. The day of doubt, according to some of the imams of the past, was that you look up in a clear sky, you look up in a clear sky, and you can't see it, but you think you might see it when the sky is clear. So they hold this. In other words, they say, يَوْمَ الشَّكْ مَحْمُولْ عَلَى حَالَ السَّحْوَةِ جَمْعًا بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ مَا ذَكَرْنَا They say that the, the day of shak, the day of doubt, when you're fasting is when the, when the sky is clear and you think you see it but you're not sure. As opposed to the day of doubt being when the, when the clouds are covering and you can't see. Why did the Ulamat come with this, this uh, explanation here? They came with this explanation to make a gem. In other words, to combine between narrations to bring them together. However, with regards to the majority position on this issue, is that you do not fast. This is the majority of Ahlul Ilm, as we mentioned, that you do not fast when, you, when it's cloudy. Rather, the majority of Ahlul Ilm consider when it's cloudy, this to be Yom al-Shak. Wallahu a'lam. Um, we'll continue the rest after the Salat, inshallah ta'ala. The next part we're going to be covering is when you see the crescent moon in your country as opposed to other countries, what's the position of the Salaf with regards to those issues. Wallahu a'lam. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك. طيب. so this last issue, uh, the last issue.
Inshallah, it's going to come down. This last issue, um, we'll make it brief, Inshallah, Ta'ala, but it's one that is of some importance. Um, this last issue, the question, إِذَا رَأَى الْحِلَالِ أَهْلُ بَلَدٍ أو أَهْلَ بَلَدٍ هَلْ لَزِمَ النَّاسِ كُلَّهُمْ سُونَ The question, if Muslims in a particular country or place, if they see the moon, does it become obligatory for all of the Muslims to fast? Yes or no? No. Huh? No. You say no? Yes. MashaAllah. Huh? No. You say yes? No. You say no? What do you say? It should be. I like that. It should be. Huh? You say yes. What about you? You don't know. You don't have an opinion. You always got an opinion. I know you. You have an opinion. You still want to say it. Thank you. Yelzim, uh, some of the ulama say that yes, it's necessary that everyone fasts if and when, if they see, if, a, if some of the Muslims see the crescent, they fast. We have a qawl al and it's the statement of Laith. Wa ba'da ashab al-Shafi'i, and some of the companions are the ones who follow the method of Imam al-Shafi'i. وَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ And some of them say إِنْ كَانَ بَيْنَ الْبَلَدَيْنِ مَسَافَةً قَرِيبَةً أو مُسَافَةٌ قَرِيبَةٌ لَا تَقْتَلِفُ الْمَطَالِعُ لِأَجْلِهَا كَبَقْدَاد وَالْبَصْرَةِ لَزِمَ أَهْلَهَا أَسْسُونْ بِرُؤْيَةِ الْهِلَافِ أَحْدَهِمَا Pay attention. This is important. Uh, as was said, some of them, some of the companions or those who follow the path or the school, the legal school of Imam al-Shafi'i, Rahimullah Ta'ala, they say that if when can it be al masafatun qaribatun, if the distance between two belads or two places of residence or two places and they are close. In other words, لا تختلف المطالع أو المطالع. In other words, the sun, when the sun rises, it doesn't differ. If the sun rises, pretty much from the same place. And so they give some examples. For example, like Baghdad, the city or the place called Baghdad and the place called Basra. Both of these places are inside of Iraq. Both of these places are inside of Iraq or Iraq. In English, is Iraq. In Arabic, is Iraq. Okay. These two two cities, they're close. In this case, lazima ahluhuma asom bi ru'yatil hila fi ahdihima. He said that it is necessary that whoever from those two places spot the hila or the crescent moon, then it is incumbent upon all of them to fast. It is incumbent upon all of them to fast. Is that clear? Huh? طيب. So now he says, wa in kana baynahuma However, if we look between the two countries or the two places, if they are if they are far, if they are far in their distance, if they are far, so he gives some examples like Kal Hijaz, like Hijaz. The Hijaz is considered Mecca, Jeddah, that region. Kal Hijaz, Wal Iraq, like from Mecca, Jeddah, all the way to the country of Iraq or Sham. Which is Syria. There, there's far. It's considered far. It says, فَلِكُلِّ أَهْلِ بَلَدٍ رُؤْيَتَهُمْ Then everyone from that particular place, they have their own specific sighting for the moon. Yes. You didn't know that? طيب. For every particular place, have their own sighting for the moon. طيب. وَرُوِيَ عَنْ إِكْرِمَةٍ أَنَّهُ قَالْ Ikrima, he said that لِكُلِّ أَهْلُ بَلَدٍ رُؤْيَتُهُمْ He said for every people, every country, they have their own specific sighting, if you will. وَهُوَ مَذْهَبِ الْقَاسِمِ And this is the method of Qasim, وَالسَّالِمْ وَإِسْحَاقْ وَلَمَرَوَى قُرَيْبْ And this is due to what was reported by Qurayban Qaw. And this was something, a, a narration that happened between the companions. So he said, 
I reached Sham. I reached the place called Sham. And while I was there, the Hilal of Ramadan, the crescent moon of Ramadan, we saw it. While I was in Sham, which today would be considered Syria in that region. And we saw the Hilal, Layla to Jum'ah. What is Layla to Jum'ah? That would be what day? Just for those who are paying attention, the night of Jum'ah is what day is that? Thursday night, Ahsent. Thursday night. Layla to Jum'ah. If that's the intent here, it would, it, it would have been Thursday night. Then we went to Al Medina. We went to Medina towards the end of Ramadan. We went to Medina towards the end of Ramadan. Fasalani Ibn Abbas. And I was asked by Ibn Abbas. And then we mentioned about the crescent moon. Fakala. And so he said, When did you see the Hila? Ibn Abbas asked him, When did you see the crescent moon? He said, We saw it on the night of Jum'ah. Fakala He said, You mean you saw this on the night of Jum'ah? So Ibn Abbas said to him, Fakala You saw this? You saw the crescent moon on the night of Jum'ah? Fakutu Naam. I said, Yes. He said, yes, I saw it, and the people saw it. And then he said, وَصَامُ وَصَامَ مُعَاوِيَةً And they all fasted, and even Muawiyah fasted. فَقَالَ لَكِنْ رَعِيْنَاهُ لَيْلَةَ السَّبْتْ And Ibn Abbas said, but we saw it on the night of Saturday. Laila to Sept, Saturday night, we saw it. طيب and he said, and we're going to continue. We are going to continue. He said, we are conti we're going to continue to fast until we complete 30 days or we see the crescent moon. This is what Ibn Abbas said. He says, فَقُطُّ And he says, so I said, تَفْتَفِي بِرُؤِيَةَ مُعَاوِيَةَ وَالسِّيَامِهِ He said, you mean to tell me you're not going to suffice with the sighting of Muawiyah and, and, the, and those who... In, in, in his fast, فقال لا ابن الباس said no. هكذا أمرنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said no, and this is what the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام commanded us to do. And this hadith was reported by Imam Muslim. This hadith was reported. You can find it in Imam Muslim or Sahih Muslim. However, the ulama al Hanabila, the ones who follow the school of thought of Imam Ahmed. They said, Walana, and we're talking about here Ibn Qudama, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He says, Walana, Kulullahi Ta'ala. He said, and for us, we take the position of the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherein he said, Faman shahida minkumu shahra fal yasumhu. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in his book, Whoever from among you witnesses the month of Ramadan, that he should fast it. In other words, it's general for everyone. And he said, because the Muslims, all of them, there's a scholarly consensus that the Muslims should fast the month of Ramadan. And it is confirmed that that particular day is the day of Ramadan by the trustworthy people, the people who are trustworthy. He says, so in this case, and so for this case, as long as we have trustworthy people recognizing that this here is indeed the start of Ramadan, then it is incumbent for all of us to fast. And this is because the month of Ramadan is between two crescent moons. And he said, and it has become that this day is from the days that the rulings you know, the day that we determine Ramadan or the days, these are very important days in which legislation is attached. Legislation and Islam are attached to these days. And so they mentioned some of the legislation that are attached to these days. Like what? Min hulul al 
If a person has a debt and it's been a whole year, you say, look, man, we mark these moon and we, 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 we keep track of the crescent moon and today marks one year based on the trustworthy people citing the moon, right? And then another one, and likewise, other rulings in Islam are also determined by this. Like what? And then he said that uh, some of the rulings that are determined by this, if a person divorces his wife, or, her, or if a person divorces his wife, he needs to know the, t the months. When, when, when was she divorced? What, what month? What day? You have to be very specific. Likewise, with Juba another, when a person makes an oath and he has to fulfill the oath. Well, lady, that another ahkam, another rulings or legislations in the religion, wherein it is known. And just something, this is from me, and this is not from this is from me. It's also important to know the dates and when they enter and, and, and enter and exit with regards to your children. When you reach the age of uh, puberty in Islam, it's 15. Well, we're not talking about 15 Gregorian calendar. We're talking about during the Miladi calendar. Um, not the Miladi, the Hijri. Hijri. We're talking about the Hijri calendar. All right. Likewise, with regards to, you know, so those things are very important to know. But, and so they say that it is important to fast these days based on the text that he mentioned and ijma of uh, of the ulama this is because the clarification of seeing the moon was done by people who are trustworthy people who statements should be relied upon and for this reason it is wajib to fast likewise for this reason it is incumbent to fast just like if the countries were close together. The thing here in our, in this city here, with regards to the issue of fasting, Ramadan, when do you actually see the moon, and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, there is a legitimate differing of opinion among the scholars of El Islam, as we just mentioned. Um, some people may feel more comfortable following the ulama or the people in Saudi Arabia for several reasons, and it's obvious um, because this is where the Mahbad al-Wahi, in other words, this is a place where the Quran was legislated. Um, this is a place where people, and I'm not, we're saying Saudi Arabia with regards to here in America, with regards to spotting the moon, for most of us, at least me, that's what I've been accustomed to for over 10 years or longer, longer than that, ever since I was Muslim. For some people, they're more comfortable with the local moon sightings. Lebas. If you know the people that, if they know what they're doing and you deem them to be trustworthy in their narration and so on and so forth, then that's for you. However, this issue here should not be an issue where the Muslims are beefing with each other over as we clearly saw between the companions. They differed with regards to the moon sighting. You saw, you're not, the, the witness of uh, Muawiyah is not sufficient for you. So that's no, this is what the Prophet ﷺ commanded us. And this is from the permissible forms of differing. As long as you have people that can spot the moon and you trust their narration levats levats the problem is when we get to people when they make inkar on these issues and they have no knowledge on these issues they are brothers haram you must follow this you must follow no. it shouldn't be. it shouldn't be. what do you have from delil what do you have from evidence to support your claims that's one of the beauties about our religion is that allah jalla wa ala we have the quran when Allah revealed the Quran and we have the Sunnah of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we also have the understanding of the companions, Ridwan Allah Alaihi, and the ulama of the past. And this is how we learn our religion. So, this issue here of who you're going to follow for the moon sighting is not a big issue. It's an issue that has been discussed by the Salaf, and you just saw that they differed on this issue. As for me, I might follow Saudi Arabia. That's because I'm comfortable. That's I'm comfortable with that. I have no doubt about that. People here, they say, no, well, brother, I'm more comfortable following here. I've been doing it for 30 years. Love us. No problem. Do what you do. The problem is don't come at me and say, oh, you want to be like that. No, brother, this is what I'm comfortable with. This is what I want to worship my Lord with. Don't get mad at me. This is what I feel comfortable doing. And you have to do what you feel comfortable doing. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته see you next week إن شاء الله